Hello, this is Texas PK, and welcome to another installment of Noobstone, where we take a simplified look at how redstone components work, so that it's not only easier to build, but understand different redstone contraptions. Today we're going to be taking a look at redstone clocks. These are possibly one of the most useful circuits in all of the game, as it creates pulses that can help control other circuits. So let's get started and I'll show you how they work. The first clock that we want to look at is a simple torch clock. And while this is a very simple clock and easy to build, it's probably not one you would use in any of your builds, but it is helpful in understanding the principles behind which redstone clocks generate their pulses and how they work. Now, the way it works is that while this block is powered, it toggles off this redstone torch, which means that this redstone dust is not powered, which means this block is not powered, so this redstone torch is able to be on, which powers this redstone dust and in turn this block, which toggles this redstone torch off. Because this torch is off, it means this redstone dust is off, which means this block is off now, which means that this redstone torch is able to be on. As you can see, this creates a chase pattern where the redstone signal is chasing this path around the circuit. This allows there to be a redstone pulse generated in a regular interval. As you can see, the torches flicker in turn, and you can tie into this very easy by adding your redstone dust to the rest of the circuit anywhere off of one of these redstone lines. You can add to this and extend the delay between the signal pulses very easily by just adding additional blocks and torches and redstone dust in this pattern. The only thing is you have to make sure it's in an odd number of torches or else it will lock up and not pulse in intervals. The odd number is very important. The next clock we want to look at is the torch repeater clock. And it is a very useful clock as it can be used in many different applications from the very simple to the more advanced. And it can be used early game even before going to the nether because it doesn't require any quartz in its components. The way it works is very similar to the torch clock that when this block is powered it powers this repeater which in turn powers this block and this redstone dust which powers this block which means that this redstone torch is now turned off. If it is off, it means this block is no longer powered, which means so is the repeater, this block, and this dust, which in turn means that this block is no longer powered, which means that this torch can now be turned on, which then repeats the cycle, creating a regular pulse. And as you see when it's running, the torch, the repeater, and the dust flicker in turn. It's also very customizable in that you can increase the delay between pulses by simply clicking the repeater and extending it from one tick to two to three to four tick delay. You can also extend the delay further if you wish by coming in, removing this dust, and adding blocks in a similar pattern to this and put in additional repeaters pointing out on the top and back to the front on the bottom and then adding a redstone dust at the last block. And you can see that the time for the cycle is extended by however long the delay is on your repeaters. You can do this indefinitely and it creates a very customizable delay in your cycle of this clock. Another nice feature of the torch repeater clock is it doesn't have to be laid out in a vertical configuration. It can be laid out horizontally. You can see that the pattern is the same though, that there is a torch, a repeater, a solid block, and then some redstone dust that comes back and powers the block that the redstone torch is placed on. And it follows the same cycle as the vertical configuration. Once you've been to the nether and you're able to get some nether quartz, it opens up some options for additional types of clocks. The first is the observer clock, and it is considerably faster than the torch repeater clock. The torch repeater clock operates at 2.5 pulses per second, where the observer clock operates at 3.3 pulses per second. And it's also, as you can see, very simple and easy to build, and fits into a very compact space as well. As you can see, all you have to do is place them looking at each other, and the way it works is the first observer sees the update from this observer, so it puts out a signal. 
Of course, once that happens, this observer sees the same thing and puts out a signal as well. And it flickers back and forth. And to plug it into a circuit, all you have to do is just tie into one side or the other. Now to have this turn off or on, all you have to do is place a sticky piston and put a lever on it. And all it does is when you remove the observer from front of the other one, the cycle ends. To activate it, just extend the piston and it will be activated. As we said, this is a very fast clock and it's perfect for something like an auto dropper system. It's so fast, in fact, that it's twice as fast as a hopper is able to feed into a dropper. So it would take two hoppers to keep up with the speed of this clock. The next clock we want to take a look at is a comparator clock. It is also very simple to build and very compact, and it is also very fast. In fact, it runs twice as fast as the torch repeater clock, running at five pulses per second. All it takes for this clock is a comparator in subtract mode looking at an input signal, like a lever or some other on-off switch, and then going into a solid block with two pieces of redstone dust feeding back into the side of the comparator. The way that this clock works is that it, the signal comes in at full strength into the comparator. It then outputs a signal of 15 into this block. The redstone dust next to it is powered at 15 and then decreases the signal strength of 14 and enters into the comparator. And since the comparator is in subtract mode, it subtracts the 14 from the 15, reducing the signal strength to 1. Which means that when it comes out of the solid block at signal strength 1, it gets to 0 by the time it comes back into the comparator the second time. This causes the signal coming out of the comparator to toggle back and forth repeatedly at full strength to 0 in a regular interval. The last clock we want to take a look at today is the Etho Hopper Clock. And it is arguably one of the most useful clocks in the game because it is highly customizable. While the other clocks are very reliable and create steady, regular pulses, the interval between them is harder to control. Whereas the Etho Hopper Clock can be easily adjusted to fit any period of time you want, including up to minutes of delay between pulses. So let's take a look at how you build the Etho Hopper Clock. To build it is very simple. You just place a temporary block, place a hopper feeding into the temporary block, remove it, then crouch place another hopper into the first one so that items can feed back and forth between the hoppers. The items passing back and forth between these hoppers is what will control the interval of our clock. Next, come and place a redstone comparator looking into this hopper. and another one on this side looking into this hopper. Place a solid block here, a temporary block there, a piston here, and do the same thing on the other side. Then remove the temporary block and place some redstone dust here and here and then place a redstone block on one of the pistons. It's advisable to put an on off switch and you can do this simply by placing a lever on any of the different blocks. You can place it here, you can place it there, wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. Whichever, wherever is convenient for you because while it's powered it will make sure that while this piston is extended this redstone block cannot be moved by the other piston. Once you've done that, you come in and place your items into your hopper clock. The number of items you place in here will determine how long a delay there is between pulses. Each item, because of the speed of the hoppers, takes 0.4 seconds to transfer between. That is two and a half items per second. That means that if I were to place 75 items in there, I'm just using slime balls, but you can use whatever you want, that if you place 75 items, it will take 30 seconds for all the items in this hopper to be fed into this hopper, and then an additional 30 seconds to feed back into this one, giving us a total cycle of one minute. You can extend or shorten that time period however you see fit and according to your needs. Just remember 
that it's 0.4 seconds for every item in the hoppers. Now if we, we've given it a moment you'll notice all the items have been transferred out of this hopper into this one. The reason they're not feeding back at this time is because this redstone block is locking this hopper. That means no items will be sent out of it and it will not draw new items in. The reason the items went into it though is because this hopper is not locked. It is able to receive items and push them into this hopper. This comparator reads when there is an item inside of this hopper. When it does so it will power this block which powers this redstone dust and extends the piston. At the same time if this one is extended the other piston cannot be extended so the redstone block stays there as you can see right now. However once this hopper is empty this comparator is turned off as you can see here. That means there is no signal going into this block meaning this redstone dust is not powered which means this piston will retract. Therefore the other piston will be able to extend and push this redstone block on top of this hopper which will lock it and prevent items from being pushed back into the other hopper. The only reason it's not working right now is because our on off switch is powering this block. See what happens when I turn it off. The other piston is extended, the redstone block is pushed, and items are flowing into this hopper. Now I've removed most of the items from this clock to demonstrate more easily how it works. Tying it into a, your, the rest of your redstone circuitry is very easy. All you have to do is place some redstone dust on one side or the other of the clock. It will then receive a signal only when the redstone block is in front of it. And you can see it creates a regular pulse. This kind of clock is very useful in redstone builds that need extended periods between pulses and is often used in conjunction with monostable circuits so that the output signal is a simple pulse instead of an extended on signal. And there you have it, some of the most useful redstone clocks in the game. I know there may be some others that are out there, but I feel these are the most useful and cover almost every circumstance that you can imagine that need redstone clocks. Well, I hope that this tutorial has been helpful and you can put it to use somewhere in your world. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you leave a comment down below letting us know how you used it. On that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye.